Good day. My name is Dwayne Ricardo Onfroy. My son is Jasse Dwayne Ricardo Onfroy. Born January 23rd, 1998. Left this earth physically June 18, 2018, at 20 years old. No jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Today we're here with XXX Tentacion. Okay, so what do, what do you want me to call you? Just call me X. X or Young Dagger Dick. Young, you want me to call you Young Dagger young Dick? Young Dagger Dick. That, you, want, you want me to say and call you Young Dagger Dick? Young Dagger Dick. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. I will call you X. Um, XXX Tentacion made two albums, both of which had an introduction explaining what the albums would be like. I want to do that for this documentary too because I feel that this documentary also deserves an explanation. My name is Gesm67 and X's death left an impact on me. I didn't know him personally but his music was personal to me. His music will never be forgotten and the impact that he had on people will never fade away. I wanted to make this documentary to talk about his life, his music, his rise to fame, and his untimely death, and why he left an impact on myself and millions of people. Even though I consider this a documentary, I'm not going to cover every single aspect of X's life, and there are going to be a lot of points throughout this documentary where I give my own opinion. Most of the sources that I used for this documentary were from X's interviews. For pacing reasons, I trimmed a lot of footage down to the most relevant parts, but assuming that you watched this entire video but you haven't seen the interviews before, I recommend that you watch the interviews as well, just so that nothing may potentially be taken out of context. Because I'm using the footage from his interviews as my primary sources, I'm going to judge everything based on his own words and assume that for the most part he's telling the truth. Because I want this documentary to serve as a tribute to X which honours his legacy. So let's start from the beginning. XXX Tentacion was born Jase Onfroy on the 23rd of January 1998 in Plantation, Florida, and spent most of his early life in Lauder Hill. Throughout his childhood, he was, well, in his own words. I was a kid that didn't say much, but like him not saying much made you want to know what the fuck he was thinking. I'd be in the cut, and then when I'd say some shit, it'd be some weird shit. Like, I'd say some crazy shit, like, oh, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you or some shit. Like, I'd be the kid in the cut to like, just get off on somebody, and then you wonder why the fuck it happened. I never really spoke. I always acted. I mean, that was always my problem. I always acted before I, I thought anything through. He experienced a lot of things in his childhood that affected him. Things that shaped him as a person. One of them was a story about defending his mother. Basically, a nigga tried to put his hands on my mom type shit. I bit his flesh out grab the glass shard and like poked him with it type shit like stab him with it. Like, wow. When I was like six, seven. X had a difficult relationship with his mother for a lot of reasons. He fought kids in school just to get her attention and because she struggled to raise him, he had to get raised by other relatives like his grandmother. X believed that because his mother couldn't raise him throughout his childhood, it made a severe impact on his mental health and made him depressed. Despite this, he understood what she was going through and still loved her. In his own words, She was in a situation where like she wanted me around but she couldn't afford to like because of shit she was around, you know, it, she was still growing up like my mom was raised in Jamaica she just wasn't in a very stable environment because she had no help at that like, raising a kid honestly was a last priority for me so what she did was she passed me from hand to hand to people that could take care of me you know I was put in situations that weren't the best but I get what she was doing so I don't resent her. I would never resent my mom but like my mom had it hard I had it hard eventually he got kicked out of high school in sophomore year for getting into so many fights but then again he didn't really like school for reasons that I can agree with realistically as the parents that send their, their kids to school, they don't even know what their children are studying. As far as the, the information they solicit, I, just, I felt like it was stupid. I would go to school, go to sleep, and like wasn't really doing anything, and I felt like it wasn't mentally doing anything for me. Like Anything that took away the freedom of my mental, or took away, that, that made my thoughts conform, I found irrelevant, and I felt like it would not benefit me at all, nor has it. Everything that I've applied my mind to, and that I really attracted mentally, has come to me. Anything that I did not want has not worked out. Most young people start their careers right after high school, whereas X's career started in the place you'd least expect. I spent a year in jail, bro. Like, bro, I met him in fucking jail. <laughs> 
When X was in jail, he met Ski Master Slum God, who was one of X's best friends and frequent collaborators. He was in jail for a whole bunch of bullshit. And that was because he did shit like selling weed, getting uh, caught, like getting kicked out of school, a whole yeah. bunch of crazy shit. And then there's X, who went to jail for armed robbery. Armed robbery? What was that like? No, no, it was gonna keep going. Okay, yeah. yeah. Armed robbery. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, he was in jail for quite a few reasons, like armed robbery, armed burglary, but, possession of a firearm, uh, armed burglary with dwelling, resisting without violence, grand theft of three yeah, charges. Yeah, he got a lot of charges. Possession of Oxycodone. They was trying to direct oh. filed his ass. On top of an armed burglary, on top of a, a possession, I had like hollow tips in my bullets type shit. I had a gun I wasn't supposed to have at that. I was just fucking up, you feel me, with all those charges. And this is not me being cool. This is not yeah, me saying this shit is okay. Well, yeah, we don't condone this shit. I was, just, <laughs> I was just fucking up. I can't deny that X did a lot of bad things throughout his life, but he acknowledged that these were bad things. He did this interview with No Jumper a year before he blew up, and even in this interview, he doesn't condone committing crimes. And two years later, when he became rich and successful, he said this in his live stream. We need good mothers, we need good fathers, we need people with sources of knowledge. Let's make it not cool to be stupid. Let's make it cool to be a good person. I'm tired of it being cool to be a fucking murderer or a shooter or just this, this irrelevant being. Like, that shit is stupid. I'm gonna show the rest of this clip later on, but for now let's focus on his time in jail, which he said was detrimental to his mental health. There was days where I'd slam my head on the fucking door for no reason. Like I just wake up and just like, fuck you wanna yeah. feel something. I, what yeah, the fuck I else feel are you gonna something do? Like, yeah. And there's crazy numb. people in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. had this one kid that would just sit there and listen to the walls and think he's listening to music. That us. You're around so many crazy people. So many crazy people starts to rub off on you, bro. Then he went on to say that the way prisons are managed and the kind of food they give to their inmates is detrimental to their physical health. It's sick. They don't feed you real meat. They not giving you the right nutrition they put in chlorine and the showers is they got bleach soaps like bro the shit is sick there's a shit called they, they call jim jones you pour it and they drink it you drink it like every day it's a it's like a juice it's like a i guess a fake juice like they put the powder in the, in the water if you pour this shit on the paint it melts the paint and they're making us drink this shit i need to add these clips so that there's a lot more context for an incident where x almost killed a gay guy in his prison cell i've seen a few media outlets that tried to use the incident as clickbait without explaining the true context behind it the source that the media tries to use for the homophobia is from the interview X had on No Jumper, which I'm going to analyze right now. Before talking about what happened, X prefaced his story by saying, I am not homosexual, I am not homophobic. If a homosexual man is around me, I will not act like a fucking prick, you know? I'm not going to act like a piece of shit and be like, oh, he's a faggot, I don't want him But if he tries to rape you But if he tries to rape me, I'm going <laughs> to okay. bash his skull in the that, that, that to me is where you cross the line. Exactly. Yeah. The so, rape thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you mean, I, I've got gay friends, I, I know gay people, gay, gay oh, people are cool. So please stop assuming assuming he was homophobic. Onto the story. They put him in a room with Ski, and um... I got the fuck out of there first quarter. Nigga was sitting in the corner staring at me, right? So I'm no like, shit. bro, if you keep staring at me, I'ma beat your ass, bro, and I'ma get another charge for you. And I really not trying to catch another charge, because we in here for some dumb shit, we gonna sit like... So he's sitting in the corner staring at me, so I'm just banging on the door. I'm like, yeah, y'all gotta get me the fuck up out of here, bro. I, <laughs> I kept banging on that shit till they let me out. So they put him in... If, then in that's my room. Was, they kicked him out his room. Like, because me and him was in the same room type shit, right? Like, my level of respect for everybody within the jail was like... Like, it, I, I wasn't a fucking prick, mm -hmm. you feel me? Like, I wanted everybody to be kosher, I wanted everybody to be calm and like just move as a, as, as a family type shit, you feel me? Right. So, I respected the officers. A lot of niggas came in there trying to disrespect the officers. I was never that guy. So, they came to me after they kicked him out his room and asked, them, asked me if they could put him in my room. And I looked at them and I laughed and I was like, Y'all can put him in my room, but if he does anything I dis like I disapprove of, I'm gonna kill him, and I'm not gonna give you any warning. Like, and I said it just like that, and I put it on, I put it on my life. I said it like that, and he was like, "All right, that's fine. As long as he don't touch you, you shouldn't have to put your hands on him." And I was like, "All right, that's fine." They put him in my room. First few days, he was straight, like he was cool. He read his books. I, I stayed in my corner. He did his thing. You feel me? He asked me a few questions. That was fine. Like I said, I'm not homophobic, so I, I would speak to him. Like I, I would even help him when people would bully him type shit. One day, he just, he just, he, he was staring at me type shit. He was staring at me throughout the day so i'm like yo i warned you so i walked out the room to go take my shower and i came back in and i like i was i was trying to calm down kind of be kosher so i turn around and i see this nigga staring at me while i'm like i'm putting on my jumpsuit towel. you got to be in a towel in front of the nigga you have to get naked in front of your friends right. type shit so that's why it's better to be in a room with your like with your like niggas you fuck with you feel me because right. if you get a weirdo it's uncomfortable yeah. so i go in the corner by the toilet type shit and put an tie on my jumpsuit and i don't put it on all the way i tie it around my my waist and i start beating his face and like i like i grab his face and like i put it on the corner type shit and i throw his head on the corner and I just started stumping and like his drawing type shit and then as soon as I did that like I remember like I just put his head on the corner and I started stumping on him and long story short I was gonna kill him 
type shit. Luckily, a guard came over and saw while saw that I was standing over his bed, but he didn't see what I was doing, you feel me? They open it and they see that, obviously, because he screamed, they open it, they pull me off. So then I go out and I said, I told y'all. The thing was, like, they respected that, you feel me? Because, like, I told them what I was going to do. They put me in a room with someone that made me uncomfortable. Or well, not necessarily uncomfortable, but they put me in a room with a risk. You can argue that staring isn't a valid reason to almost kill someone, and I agree with that. However, there are aspects of the story that need to be taken into consideration. Firstly, the only reason why the gay cellmate shared a cell with X was because nobody felt comfortable with being in the same cell with him. So clearly the staring was a lot more uncomfortable than it should have been. Secondly, this was a prison. People go to prison for doing bad things. So there's a reason why the gay guy was in prison. I'm not gonna assume why he was in prison, but he was there for a reason. Thirdly, X was naked and being stared at. The gay guy was transferred to different cells countless times, he's received hundreds of warnings, and despite all of this, he still didn't learn his lesson. Prison is an environment where people lose parts of their sanity and the inmates have done bad things in the past. So the way I see it, this was going to happen eventually. But just to be clear, I'm not condoning X's actions. I think X went way too far with the beating. Despite the warnings he gave, I still think X went too far. He said he smeared the gay guy's blood on his face because he felt some kind of psychotic rage. I think X should be held accountable for his actions, yeah, at the same time, the prisoner should have been transferred to a different prison or some kind of protective custody a lot sooner. This is complicated because I can't find another side of the story. You could argue that there are parts of the story that are fabricated or left out, but like I said before, I'm going by what X is saying unless there's an opposing argument from another witness. But regardless, I think it's time to change the subject and talk about what you will always be known for. Like a lot of musicians, X started making music because he saw it as a much better outlet for him. Literally, like when I was a kid, like I said, I was batshit fucking crazy. I would just fight way too much. I had problems with my mom. My dad wasn't around. I was just lost. Literally lost, numb, and usually like growing up, the kids always are like, oh, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a president. Or I, wanna... I literally always, always was my answer. You can ask my mother. I never fucking knew. So amongst that, like just knowing I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do, music started to present itself. Because I like, I think like people are probably like, oh, this nigga's typical. He probably listens or like Lil Wayne or like and shouts out to Lil Wayne all these great artists for me listening to that typical trap shit but nah bro like I grew up listening to The Fray Three Days Grace Papa Roach really? But yeah bro like like I was weird. I listened to Blood on the Dance Floor. Like yeah, uh -huh. okay. yeah. I was I was fucking weird. But you bro. weren't into rap. You were just into like, I was, sort of like right, screamo. That's dance? where that's where oh, that's, that's okay. where the versatility uh, both, comes. Like everything. Yeah, that's where the versatility comes with me because I would I would go from listening to that to Little Wayne, right. to Tupac, to Biggie, to, to to like different artists. You know, like I came up off like a lot of artists. Like I would go from all of that. Like from rock to fucking rap to literally Japanese fucking instrumentals, like right. different Japanese songs. Like I was completely and utterly mesmerized by music. Because he listened to all kinds of music, he also made all kinds of music. I'll go from like melancholy indie sound of rock to like a very trap element, or like a trap rock element. Then I'll go to like completely like some other shit, like some jazz, like smoothie going shit, you feel me? Like I'll try and literally miss in as many aspects as I can. X didn't like school because it tried to force some kind of structure in him that he didn't feel comfortable with. He never wanted to be confined by anything, especially not of music. I strongly believe that anyone who listens to music would enjoy at least one of his songs because he made music that caters to so many different styles and genres. People create art for a lot of reasons. There is the aspect of money, but there's also the personal aspect where someone has a desire to create something. I'll even say that about myself. I wanted to make this film because I want to give myself the opportunity to learn more about X while making what I would consider to be my first serious video. As for X, he made music to express himself but also to connect with others. I mean, I do this for the bond and obviously the attention because I need the attention. I need it to mold me as a person and I fucking love music, you feel me? X was a very self-conscious person that felt uncomfortable with his appearance. So when he was asked, Does music give you confidence? He said, Music has saved my life. The interview he did on No Jumper was recorded a year before he blew up, and yet even back then, X still had what was considered a cult fan base. There aren't a lot of rappers that gain a cult fan base. It's even more unusual when a rapper who isn't even that famous gains the kind of fan base that's so attached to them. It was through SoundCloud and social networking that he gained his following. Social networking was always a, a forte for me. I always knew how to social network, I always knew how to publicize things, I always knew how to be a fucking idiot enough to where people would see. Just I'm not getting a little ignorant on social media a little to ignorant get on attention. Social media because no one else would do it. He released a song called Look At Me, which was his breakout single. It's a very unique track in the way that it has this distorted sound to it. It sounded unpolished, which was X's intention. It's raw and, and, and it don't sound like anybody else. And if it don't sound like anybody else, then it sound like me. The thing that made the song so special was that it was so different compared to a lot of rap songs that become successful. And the intentions that X had for the song are really admirable. The niggas at the top of the industry right now, everybody's trying to sound like him. Every single person 
that jumps into music. They're like, all right, how can I sound like this? This is the sound I want, you know what I'm saying? I came out literally trying to, to change that. The song was already successful in its own right, but the thing that made the song blow up was when Drake released a song called KMT, which had a really similar flow to Look At Me. I've listened to Drake's response and he was talking about X as if he never heard of him before, but in comparison between his side of the story and X's, I think Drake was lying. Drake hit up a DJ that I fought with and bruh told me, he was like, yo, the nigga Drake watched your interview, he said he fucked with you and he fucked with your partner Ski Mask. He's like, yo, he saying he go call your manager within the next few days. So I'm amped up. Nigga, I fuck with Drake. Yeah. You feel me? Drake a genius. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, despite me disrespecting him as a man, because I can't respect him as a man, respect that nigga career. Corporately, that nigga is the GOAT. And I knew what I was doing when I said what I said and I knew how to approach him. Because I know where he can't beat me at. Initially, he was supposed to contact one of my managers. So he doesn't do it. That same fucking week, bro. I go on to, bro, well, I can't go on to the obviously because I'm locked up. But yeah. I, I'm on the securest phone, you feel me? So you in jail, he's supposed to contact your manager, yeah. and then. He dropped a fucking video of previewing that shit in Amsterdam with some nigga from, from the UK. I was on the phone with my dog, Chris. He was like, yo, you gotta listen to this shit. This nigga Drake a fault nigga. That's what, exactly what he said. So he plays this shit. I hear, da 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 I'm like, what the fuck? As soon as it started, like, I knew. I knew he was getting that. Like, they did a mashup. They put his verse on my song. The cadence is literally. Just at the same tempo. It's not offbeat at all. That's a bitch move. Especially when I was in jail facing life. If Drake would have came to my, my barn here, then that would have made my fucking day. If he would have showed that he's a hospitable person and that he's really in this shit for the culture, rather than being a fuck nigga taking my shit, running off with it, and then putting it on his album, then he would have got my kudos, he would have got my respect. I would have let him hop on the remix, take 100% royalty rate. X's career was a very short yet impactful one. He was part of XXL's 2017 freshman class, the kind of thing that a lot of aspiring rappers can only dream of appearing on. So when they asked, him why he thought he was chosen as one of the freshmen for 2017, he said, Because if y'all didn't, y'all didn't respect the culture this year. And it's about the artistry. So being on the front of a magazine doesn't mean a fuck thing to me, to be honest. I mean, it's gonna be cool for my mom. My mom likes that type of shit. But I'm about it for the culture. I'm not gonna talk about every single detail of his career. Because I feel like the less I say, is the more people will wonder. Or in this case, they will try to find out themselves. If you're already a fan of X, I'm just telling you things you already know in a cinematic and hopefully entertaining way. And if you don't listen to his music, I suggest you listen to both of his albums because I wanted to make this film in a way that's as close to X's perspective as possible while giving my own opinions. He was a rapper who could have had a long, successful career, who could have developed as an artist and do things that should have been featured in this documentary. Sadly, that's never going to happen because on the 18th of June, he was murdered. Today is June 18th, 2018. Unfortunately, in light of what's happened today, XXX Tentacion passed away today. And two men in a dark colored SUV shot him and then fled the scene. I do everything with my own motive, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, I believe anybody that can live without motive is literally the most insane person there is. I believe the person who probably plots on murder or plots on doing crazy things is the least crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm considered crazy, but I think I'm the least crazy because I want the man who can just kill a man with no recollection or no thought to it or, or just make a crazy decision with no plot behind it is literally fucking crazy. But so you don't think you're crazy be, be, like because you... Because I, 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 everything comes with thought. Bro, I don't even know what to say right now. I don't know what to say either. Ski Master Slum God was one of X's closest friends, and Adam22 was also close to X. Even though it was X's murder that ended his career, I don't want this documentary's final chapter to be dedicated to his murder. I don't want him to be remembered for being a murder victim. I want him to be remembered for positive things. I don't even want to focus too much on this chapter, but because it's essential, I'll go through it. People die all the time, and usually when a celebrity dies, it doesn't have an effect on me. X was different though. He had a lot of issues, but you can see that he tried to be a better person. Person. He could have gotten so far as an artist, but his life was stripped away from him for some money in a Louis Vuitton bag. That is, if the murder wasn't planned. The robbery was planned, I can't say anything about the murder. On the day of the murder, Adam22 was supposed to have a casual interview on Mom's basement with Lil Xan, FaZe Banks and Keemstar. Two hours before the interview started, X's murder became breaking news which changed their plans completely. I have to give respect to these guys for carrying on with the interview, despite receiving tragic news on such short notice. Everyone is sad in this interview, but it was Adam22's facial expression that really got to me. X was younger than all of the people in this interview, and he was younger than me too. I made a video six months ago called, I just turned 21, because on my 21st birthday, I reached 100 subscribers, and I ended the video with one of X's songs. X didn't even get the chance to live to 21. He got murdered at age 20. He was murdered by Dedrick D. Williams and Michael Boatwright. As of the release of this documentary, Robert Allen is considered a person of interest in the investigation and the authorities are still searching for him. The only reason why these guys became relevant is because they murdered someone who was an icon to millions of people. That's all that needs to be said about them. But regardless, I've spoken too much about these guys, so let's get back to who's really important.
X was unlike any rapper that ever existed before. I've already spoken about his music, but this time I want to talk about his reach. He's one of the most successful musicians in the world right now, and he also ran his own YouTube channel. If you check his social blade, he was consistently gaining over 100 million views a month for the last three months of his life. And ever since he passed away, his numbers only got bigger. I know it's because he released his album at that time, but that doesn't take away how impressive that is. Because before the release of Sad, he didn't have any music videos available on his channel. Usually music videos gain a lot more views than audio, yet XXXTentacion only had three music videos that were filmed while he was alive. The first two were Look At Me and Riot, which were combined as one video, but it was removed by YouTube for the hanging scene. The third one is Sad, which has to be one of the most intriguing music videos I've ever seen in my life. When I was doing my research for this film, I couldn't even find that many interviews he did, and the ones that I could find had insane amounts of views. There's a reason why he was so popular, and it's one of the reasons why I decided to make this film. Because his music helped a lot of people. He was honest, and he never played the victim. Black people want equality. Everybody wants equality. And then they try and make this black this black power make equality a whole different privilege. You cannot be privileged. There is no privilege in equality. If a fucking asshole comes and arrests you and you think that cops are just all racist, cops violate everyone. If you were white, you were gonna be white. If you were black, you were gonna be black. Hate crimes are hate crimes. If that cop fucking hates black people, then you just so happen to get the hard end of the stick, you feel me? But at the end of the day, crime is crime, hate is hate. Like, all right, if I go out and get arrested and I try and make it a, a black hate crime, like, oh, they arrested me because I'm black. That's not equality. That's me trying to be privileged by being black and playing the race card. So when people play the race card, you're fucking assholes. It doesn't make sense. If you want to be like everybody else, take the beating, take the bullshit like everybody else. You cannot be privileged because you're black. Just like a white person will probably get beat the fuck out of if they do some dumb shit. If you try and run from the cops, they're gonna fucking tase you. If you try and fight the cops, they're gonna fucking kill you. More likely because you're black, because you look intimidating, because black, some black people look fucking intimidating. If you look intimidating, they're gonna try and beat the shit out of you. If you don't look intimidating, they're not gonna touch you. They're probably gonna treat you like a bitch if you're a bitch. <laughs> he was a critical thinker that loved expressing his thoughts and asking questions, which I feel that he inherited from his father, who also makes inspirational videos on Instagram. My last vlog, I said that you individually have the power to change the world through social media. Now here's the next question I'm asking. How do you change the world? You change the world by changing your mindset. Once you've changed the way you think and act and do things positively, you're changing your life. Henceforth, you're becoming an example. So the question I'm asking is, what have you done today to change your world? What have you done to change another person's life? What have you done to do to, to make a positive influence on someone else's life? And dare I say, I strongly believe that X's death will have the same impact as the deaths of Tupac and Biggie. The music industry is filled with musicians that make whatever is considered popular for financial gain, yet X was different. Look At Me is one of his most popular songs, yet it's not even on either of his albums. It was on a compilation album. Songs like Look At Me and I'm Sipping Tea In Your Hood were successful because they were aggressive, yet none of the songs on his debut album 17 were like that. It's the difference between being an artist and being a rapper. Some of these niggas could hop on the hop on the radio and be gone the next day. They could try and be on the top, but they can't maintain it. I can maintain. I'm made for this shit. The album didn't have a lot of promotion either, and yet it still became a huge success. In the grand scheme of things, these are just numbers, and X was not just a person who could only be analyzed by his statistics. He was big because he cared about people. His last vlog was meant to promote a hashtag which specialized in helping people. He started the vlog by saying, Today I'm gonna be vlogging because I'm gonna be going to a, a foster home. And I'm gonna be donating a bunch of clothes, a bunch of PS4s, like shoes, uh, just different things to the kids. I'm gonna donate like a bunch of stuff to them. And he proceeds to do it. Even his last post on Instagram stories was about him planning a charity event. He said he would donate $100,000 to domestic violence prevention programs. And there was some controversy because there was no proof that he actually did it. And some of you might even be cynical enough to believe that he was doing these things to make himself look better. Here's the thing though, he didn't do those things to please the media. The media thrives on negativity because that's what gains popularity. That's why Complex made so many videos against X. Secondly, X didn't need to put the effort into making videos. He didn't need to donate those PS4s and clothes to kids in a foster home. He didn't need to promote a hashtag. He didn't need to buy homes for his relatives. He didn't need to message people to help him out. He did those things because he wanted to. And that's it. Regardless of this, people still hate him and don't think he deserved compassion from others. Even if he never donated a penny to charity or he didn't do any of the good things he did in his life, it still wouldn't have stopped X from having a cult following. He didn't give a fuck about his haters. He was too busy caring about his fans. I love these kids and I know what it feels like to be alone. I got a long tattooed on the left side of my face and I mean that. Like, I know what it feels like to wake up somewhere where you're not supposed to be around people you're not supposed to be around. You could be around a million people and still be alone. I know what that felt like and I know what it felt like being on the verge 
of wanting to end it all, but being too pussy to do it. I was I was too pussy to, to, to end my life, so mm. I knew that feeling, and I wanted to come for anybody. Because I found a way out through the music. I want to relate to people. Right. I want to bond with people because I did not have the bond I wanted with my mom. Right. So okay. I felt I felt very. My dad wasn't around either. You notice I can't even really speak about my dad. My dad got locked up. Yeah. I had nobody, bro. After my mom kicked me out, I was depressed. I had bad sleep deprivation. Like, bro, I had fucking sleep paralysis. Like. It was horrible. Anyone who has a fan base is bound to love their fan base. But it's like I said before, X didn't just have a fan base. He had a cult following, and this is why. What you feel in the night, what you feel in the morning, what you feel midday, that you don't think, other people have the same thoughts. You feel alone in this thought, but other people have the same thoughts. When you display this thought, it brings a certain amount of comfort within people. Right. And people start to feel like, all right, this person understands me. This person is fucking cool. And then he summarizes everything by saying this. I am the epitome of the misunderstood. And from here, I think it's time to talk about the people who misunderstand him. Calling someone a hater is pretty childish. Then again, I believe it's also childish to say he deserved to die because he's homophobic and beat up his pregnant girlfriend, which I'll get into later on in the video. The homophobia part is just ill-informed without any context. It's just clickbait that makes the person of discussion look bad. Even X's dad got that treatment, which shows you just how desperate websites are to gain more clicks. The biggest reason to hate on X would be regarding the assault case involving his ex-girlfriend Geneva. I'll give my views on the case in the next chapter, but for now I'm going to talk about her reaction to X's death. When she heard the news it broke her heart. If his own ex-girlfriend, someone who actually knew him personally and loved him, would say he didn't deserve to die, what gives you the right to say he deserved to die? And even if his girlfriend was genuinely happy about his death, let's not forget that he died at the age of 20. This is a picture that Adam22 tweeted, which in my opinion instantly devalues most of X's criticisms. If you hated X for his past, you better hate any person who ever had a rough past as well, no matter who they are. And you know what? Even if this documentary hasn't completely changed your mind, at least show a bit of respect. This was a 20 year old man who got murdered before he could have had the chance to do the things he wanted to do. He was a son, a brother, a friend, and an icon to millions of people who say his music saved their lives. And soon he's going to be a father to a child who's going to have to come to terms with the fact that their father had people who were pleased about his death. I'm not saying you should love him, but if you still don't believe he deserves sympathy for his death, you're actually fucked in the head. The main reason why people are still glad he's dead is because of the controversy regarding his ex-girlfriend, which I'm finally going to talk about. Before I say anything, I'm gonna play this clip. I spent nine months in jail by myself because I fell in love with the wrong person. I, I mean, I, I tried to give them the world just due to the fact that I, obviously I must not have been enough. A lot of shit took place. Initially, uh, the charges that were pending against me, I mean, they're not true. The fuck up part is it's not true. They had no evidence from the very beginning, so I was sitting on no evidence. Just due to the fact that I violated pretrial, which is ankle monitor, pretrial release, it made everything 10 times harder for me. And my ex knew that, and she fucked me over on purpose. Like, I always told her, like, yo, I, I can't get into no shit. You get what I'm saying, or else I, I might be going back for life. So, do you still speak to your ex? Or what's the situation? Do you guys have children together, or? No, it was it was just more or less like when you. Like, I'm just saying this to you as a person, not even like, not, not even on no interview shit. Like when you, when you you know what it feels like to feel for somebody. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And when you have this genuine, genuine feeling that you get from somebody, and you get make that person your source of happiness, obviously it becomes like they they become your drug. You know what I'm saying? This girl became like my drug. It was mentally, I, it may have just been myself because I, I wasn't enough for myself at that point in time. Like, So like, she fed something in you that you felt like you were missing? She filled the void. There was always there, will be and always was a void in my heart. And it was just due to the fact that I didn't have my mom for a long amount of time. It's mainly because of the story that people have such a negative opinion on X. This is the hardest chapter to make because I can't give a response that won't offend anyone. Yet at the same time, I can't make a documentary about X without mentioning this. This documentary has been on X's side for the most part, but this time I'm not taking anyone's side. Because to be honest, I don't have a theory on what really happened. I did state in the prologue that I would judge things based on what he said and assume that they're true. But because there's an opposing opinion and the fact that this is such a sense sensitive topic that I'm only going to say one thing. His ex-girlfriend changed her name on Instagram to Liar and it's believed that she changed her name to Liar because she was lying about being pregnant. She hasn't provided any new information regarding the abuse case so I'm not going to assume what happened. And regardless of what really happened, it doesn't change how this chapter is supposed to end. His girlfriend has already stated that she's heartbroken over his death. You can make the argument that victims of abusive relationships feel an attachment to their abusers when they pass away, but even if that's true in this case, does it make her sympathy towards him unjustified? It's her personal life that just happens to be 
be public information. That doesn't mean you should assume what her true opinions are and what really happened between her and X. There was a memorial the day after he died and X's fans didn't even allow her to stay there. She said that X would have wanted her there and I think she's right. She wanted to leave gifts and they were burnt by X's fans. She has the right to leave gifts, regardless of the things she said about him. If you're going to resort to kicking her out of the memorial just because of your opinions on her, then you're taking away someone's human rights. I'm not saying you should forgive her for the things she said, but I am saying she has the right to mourn over his death. Geneva will never have the chance to speak to X. She won't ever be able to say a proper goodbye to him that ends on good terms. I think in that case, both of them were robbed of forgiveness in their own ways. Even though the relationship ended on a horrible note, there's a reason why they were in a relationship in the first place. And while he did say negative things about her on his 103 the B interview, I think it's worth revisiting what X said in his previous interview of No Jumper. You could try to dismiss it as nothing more than her filling in the void, but regardless of that, they did love each other for a reason. I'm always gonna talk about my ex because my ex and music saved my fucking life. My ex stayed with me as long as she needed to while I was insane and saved me. Because my thing was, I lived with my ex for almost a year and I was literally going insane and she was my safe haven. Like I would go to her and like in the very beginning it was perfect, you feel me? Like me and my ex did a blood bond because we loved each other that much. Like that's not something you can take away. Like if she's ever sad, I can feel it. Like it's weird, like I can, I, I swear. Like there's times where if she hits me up, I'll already know what she wants to tell me. She was everything for me and she lied to me about some, some stupid shit and then from there, like I got insecure. I stopped trusting her, and afterwards, like it just breeded a whole different just madness. Just the relationship, it, huh? Not even. It ruined me. Mm. It breeded. It breeded a whole different madness in my head to where I was like, I thought I wasn't enough. You know, I thought I, I thought I wasn't shit. I was like, oh, you feel me? Like, what does the next nigga have that I don't have? She never cheated on me. She was a great girlfriend. If I was broke, I wasn't tall. I wasn't the strongest nigga. I didn't have much going besides my music. The way she loved me and the way she showed me love, I literally loved her so much that I wanted her to leave me alone. Mm -hmm. So I ruined it just because she loved me, you know? And it, it's, it's not, I regret a lot of decisions I make, but no, nah, nah, You nah, always you hold on, you're, you're holding on to this one girl. It, yeah, She yeah. stands out to you as the yeah, one. Yeah, she's always, uh, anything she needs, anything she needs, she knows who she is. But what's your relationship with her like now? She hates my guts. She hates you. She hates my guts. To fix your penis, you need nitric acid. I know that was a really weird clip to end the last chapter on, but I put it there for a reason. Even though there were tragic aspects to their relationship, that didn't mean they lacked a sense of humor. <laughs> Life has its ups and downs, and just because a person had a rough life and lost at a young age, doesn't mean their life was always down. I've always believed that whenever a person dies, and the friends and family of that person mourn over their death, the person who died would want to tell them that they would rather be remembered for the good times, and let the bad times be put to a side so that it's easier to come to terms with death. On the 21st of February 2018, X posted his final track on SoundCloud, titled Hope, as a tribute to the victims of the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting, and the song's description on SoundCloud are words to live by. Follow your dreams and know that even though you have lost, you have guardian angels watching over you day in and day out. The last thing they want is for their lives to be lost in vain. Make them proud. Live full, healthy, genius lives. Even though he died at such a young age, he was already open to giving his thoughts on life and death. Five months before his murder, DJ Academics asked him, How does the story of Tentacion end? And then X responded in the most interesting way possible by saying, I live as long as I possibly can so these kids can see as possible. And then boom. I die either of old age or somebody murder me or some shit. Fuck it. Like I said before, X was open to giving his thoughts on life and death. Ten days after he passed away, the music video for Sad was officially released, which is surreal because it begins with X walking towards his own coffin for his own funeral. In a weird way, the music video reminded me of something he said in an interview before. I believe in past lives and future lives. I believe in the karmic cycle. I believe you will repeat this life until you get it right. I believe until you align the karmic cycle, nothing else matters. Every tattoo he ever had had some kind of meaning. One of his most iconic tattoos is the one that says alone, which was already mentioned earlier in the video, but I think the reason why he has that tattoo deserves to be seen. Alone. Alone is the biggest concept for me, literally. Alone is literally 
my idolization. Because my thing is, whether people think they're alone, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're amongst a thousand people, you are still alone. Mm -hmm. Because your lies are not known by these other people. Your sins are not known by these other people. Until you confess your sins until amongst another man or upon your God or even the devil or even what you believe in, nobody will completely know you. So no one will ever know if you're being honest. No one will ever know what you want them to know. No one will ever know what you want them, what you want them to know how you feel, you know? But most importantly, he had words for the people he loved the most. And that's you guys. Regardless of what happened on the 18th of June, I consider the words he says in this clip as his true final words. Hey, Hey guys, <laughs> how are you? I won't be long. I really just wanted to directly communicate with those that pay attention to what I'm doing and that support me. And I wanted to offer some words of inspiration. For the words of inspiration, I just really wanted to tell you guys that it does not matter what your dream is or what your goal is. You make sure that it is your prime priority to follow what you believe is good for you. Do not live your life trying to impress someone else and do not live your life trying to be someone you're not and do not live your life making yourself miserable just to amount to someone else's idealism. You don't want to be following someone that's taking you down a dark road. I believe in the human race period and I truly believe that anyone can be what they want to be. We need good mothers, we need good fathers, we need people with sources of knowledge. Let's make it not cool to be stupid. Let's make it cool to be a good person. I'm tired of it being cool to be a fucking murderer or a shooter or just this, this irrelevant being. Like, that shit is stupid. The sooner we, we understand that we need each other, which is the truth, bro, because I wouldn't be who the fuck I was if I didn't have the support from you guys and I didn't have the people that truly believed in me. I would be nothing. And I, I'm aware of that. And I've gone through my fair share of destruction and, and pain in the process to get where I've gotten. And I, and I know that anything is possible. All right, let's say worst thing comes to worst. I fucking die a tragic death or some shit. And I'm not able to see out my dreams. I at least want to know that the kids perceived my message and were able to make something of themselves and able to take my message and use it and turn it into something positive and to, to at least have a good life. If I'm going to die or ever be a sacrifice, I want to make sure that my life made at least 5 million kids happy or they found some sort of answers or resolve in my life. Regardless of the negative around my name, regardless of the bad things people say to me, I don't give a fuck because I know my goal in the end and I know what I want for everyone and I know what my message is. So I just wanted to say I appreciate and love all of you and I believe in you all. Do not let your depression make you. Do not let your body define your soul. Let your soul find your body. Your mind is limitless. You are worth, you are worth more than you could believe. All you have to do is dream and all you have to do is want to fulfill that dream and have the strength to fulfill that dream. It was my dream to make a film about X that would honor his legacy. I put my all into this and I hope that the words he said inspired you and that this documentary has helped cure or at least numb the sad feeling of his passing. I think it's time to let the man enjoy the rest of his existence in heaven and dedicate the final part of this documentary to the people who loved him the most. I just want to uh, thank everybody for coming. It's, it's incredible how many people were so deeply affected and moved by X and it's just, like the ridiculous crowd that goes as far as I can see right now is a pretty good symbol of uh, how much of an impact he made on so many people. And I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Obviously, I'm kind of losing my composure here, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are. Long live X! 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 You guys meant the world to him, and in a weird way, when I met him, he kind of knew that something like this was going to happen, I guess. Like, he knew that it was going to affect the world, and he knew that he was going to, a lot of people were going to be hurt when he left, but I guess we should all just feel lucky that we got to experience it while he was here, so thank you all. I love you. Thank you for listening. You saved millions of people.
people bro, with life. Bro. You are a king. You are literally everything that we've been wanting in this world bro. to speak. Truth bro. on everything. Bro. We bro. love you. Bro. Long, we live love you. Long, live Long live X. 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 X meant the world to me, man. For three years, this, help, this dude helped me get through depression and a bunch of stuff, man. Like, just knowing that he's not on this earth anymore, breathing the same way we are, that honestly sucks, and he did not deserve to go the way he did. I would mourn my child from Monday to Monday, seven days. And after seven days, I would forever celebrate my child's life. All he accomplished, everything and everyone that he touched. I appreciate you too, bro. It's like, your message is perfect, so I have to do that, you know what I mean? Thank you, bro. Pray the Lord my soul to keep Hope's not too late for